Our problem starts out on the number line. Not the whole number line, just this little tiny piece of the number line from zero to one. Sounds pretty simple. And that's why you should be scared. Because a lot of the simplest sounding math problems turn out to be the hardest ones. We start here from zero to one, and here's our problem. I'll choose two numbers at random, between zero and one. And we want the probability that the second number I choose is more than a quarter greater than the first number I choose. So just to make sure we understand what's going on here, we'll try a few choices. Suppose I choose zero and then one. Zero, then one. Well, clearly one is more than a quarter greater than zero. So that one's good. But if I had chosen them in the other order, one and then zero, that's no good. We need the second number to be more than a quarter greater than the first number. So the second one has to be larger. That's no good. Let's try some more interesting pairs. Let's say one third and one half. One half is greater than one third, but it's not more than a quarter greater than one third. So this one's no good. But if I'd chosen one third and two thirds, we'd be okay. Then the second number is more than a quarter greater than the first. And if I had chosen seven eighths and one one hundredth, well, that one's no good. Seven eighths is way bigger than one one hundredth, but we need the second number to be the larger number. So this one's no good. So now that we have an idea what's going on here, we're pretty confident. We understand this seemingly simple problem. Let's see if we can solve it. We want the probability that the second number is more than a quarter greater than the first. And we know how to handle probability problems, right? You just count the number of successes and you divide by the number of possible choices, right? I mean, that's, that's how we do lots and lots of probability problems. We just list and count all the possibilities and we stick that in the denominator. And then we go through all those possibilities and we count up all the number of successes. And we stick that in the numerator and we call that probability and we're done. So let's do that here. Let's start counting. We're going to count the number, of, we'll start with the number of possible because you don't even have to think there. We're just picking two numbers between zero and one. How hard can that be to count? So how many ways can I pick two numbers between zero and one? Well, I'll start by counting the number of ways I can pick the first number. I can pick any number from zero to one. And the number of numbers between zero and one is big. Uh-oh. There's infinitely many numbers between 0 and 1. I can't count that. I can't count them. I mean, if I started counting the 1, 2, 3, I'd be here forever. Literally forever. And then I'd have to count the second numbers, too, and then I'd have to multiply. This is ridiculous. We can't do this. We can't count the number of possible ways. We, uh, and the number of successes, I mean, we see that there's, there's some. I mean, there are infinitely many of those, too. You know, I can pick any, any number from zero to three quarters for the, the, uh, for the first number and then find a number that's a quarter. Uh, this is impossible. I can't count the number of possibilities. I can't count the number of successes. Because I can't count to infinity. We need something that's really good at measuring infinity, like a really big ruler. But I don't have one of those. I don't have a big ruler and I wouldn't even know where to put it if I did. What's really good at measuring infinity? I know something that's good at measuring infinity. Geometry. Look at this segment from zero to one. Infinitely many points, right? Because I can pick, there's infinitely many numbers I can pick there. But I can measure it. I can say its length is one. Length gives me a way to measure infinite sets of points when they're all in a nice little segment like this. And these are, and that's convenient. Area is another way geometry lets us measure infinitely many things. Imagine I start with a square. And I want to count the points. One, two, three, four, five. Count the points inside. That'll literally take me forever. But with geometry, I can say, what's the area? And the area lets me measure these infinitely many points. So let's try to use geometry, because I need something that measures infinities. And geometry measures infinities. So I'm going to try to find a way to jam geometry into this probability problem. Uh, how can we do that? Those look like coordinates. If I call the first number x and the second number y, maybe I can put this on the coordinate plane. And we like that because the coordinate plane, that gives us geometry. That gives us geometry. 
And instead of counting numbers of successes and numbers of possible, we'll use geometry in some way. Let's see if we can figure out how. I'm going to call this x and this y, and I know that x has to be from 0 to 1, and I know y has to be from 0 to 1. So I know that any of these points that I pick, when I look at them as coordinates, they have to be inside this square. They have to be inside this side length 1 square, because the x-coordinate can only be from 0 to 1, y-coordinate only from 0 to 1. This is easy to measure. Its area is 1, and now I know how I'll do probability. I'll find the area of the successful region, divide that by the area of the possible region. And we know that already, we know that that is just one, area of the possible region. That's nice and easy. That's our square. So now we have to figure out what the area of the successful region is. And what is success here? Success is when the second number I choose is more than a quarter greater than the first number that I chose. So I want the difference between the second number and the first number must be greater than a quarter. Well, I'm not sure what to do with that, but this looks like something I know how to graph. I know how to graph it if it's an equal sign. That I know how to graph. That's just a line. If I just find two points on this line, I can graph it. One easy point is if I put in a quarter for y and zero for x, that's going to be right about there. There's one point, and I can find another point. If I put in a quarter for x and a half for y, so there's a quarter for x and a half for y. It's going to be right about there, and then I have my line. There's my line. That is y minus x equals one quarter. I want y minus x to be larger than a quarter. So in order to get y minus x to be larger than a quarter, I need to increase y. I want all the points that are above this line, because I want y to be higher in order to make y minus x to be greater than 1 quarter. So my successful region is just this triangle right in here. This nice, simple, isosceles right triangle. And I can find the area of that really fast. This is a quarter, this is 1, so this side length is 3 quarters. And this is an isosceles right triangle. And if we didn't see that, we could just see that this point up here, where y is 1, x is 3 quarters. So this side length is also 3 quarters. So the area of this little triangle here is we multiply the legs, we divide by 2. Multiply the legs, you get 9 sixteenths. You divide by 2, you get 9 30 seconds. And 9 30 seconds, the area of the successful region, divide by the area of the possible region. Well, that's an easy division. We have 9 30 seconds as our probability. And look at that. We use geometry to solve a probability problem. Now, you know, this reminds me of another problem. Lots of things remind me of math problems. I'm kind of hard to live with that way. I was driving into work today, and I was thinking, I was, I was remembering, fortunately, I was remembering that I have to pick up my wife at the airport today. And I was glad that I remember, but I, I forgot all her flight details, left those at home. But I did remember that the flight was between 10 and 11. I just wasn't sure when. You know, I just remember the 10 sitting there, and I, I don't remember when. So I'm just going to pick a random time. Go to random time between 10 and 11. I'm going to wait for I'm going to wait for a half hour, and she's going to land at some random time between 10 and 11, and and she's going to wait for only 10 minutes. She's going to only wait for 10 minutes, and if I haven't shown up, then she's going to hail a cab, and and she's going to take a cab home, and I'm going to be in trouble because I forgot again. Um, so I'm going to get there between 10 and 11 at some random time. I'm going to wait for 30 minutes. I was thinking as I was driving in, and I know that she'll only wait for about 10 minutes for me uh, before she gives up again, and takes the cab home, and I'm in trouble. And I was thinking to myself, what's the probability that I get in trouble? What time is it? Oh boy, I gotta go.